Movement is central in Claire G. Coleman's space opera The Old Lie, perhaps even more central than in her first novel Terra Nullius, which features a young man fleeing from those who seek to keep him away from his family. The Old Lie tells the story of an intergalactic war and thus is set in a variety of places across the universe. Naturally, its focalizing characters, of which there are quite a few, occasionally do need to get from one place to another. They use different forms of transport and they are in fact different kinds of travelers. Researchers, foot soldiers, starship pilots, refugees and fugitives. Even leisure seekers are among the traveling, as the reader learns fairly at the end of the novel. The novel's plot is set in motion by an act of travelling, even though it may not at first glance appear so. The department of births, deaths and marriages in the city of Melbourne falls prey to a seemingly terrorist attack, which we can later assume was the first step of an invasion by an alien force, who of course had to travel through space to reach Earth. Chapter 1 then features a group of soldiers marching through mud. The first act of traveling, the space journey that had to get them to the foreign planet to fight, is only addressed later, but even while on the ground, the narrative focuses on their movement. As the quote reads, Captain Daniels was trudging in the rear, boots heavier with every labored step, herding the stragglers, keeping them in line, despite standing itself having long since become a chore. The mud at the back of the migrating mob must be even worse than it would be up front, because every soldier who went before had churned the puddles into soup. They marched on, slowing to the pace of the slowest. Clearly, the focus here is on the struggle to move forward, the obstacles the soldiers have to face while trying to get to a point of collection where they will be picked up by a spaceship. The troops are even referred to here as the walking dead, highlighting how movement itself has become almost unbearably hard. And this kind of military movement dominates those narrative strands that follow Shane Daniels as she travels from planet to planet to fight on the ground or alternatively battles on space stations besieged by the enemy. Similarly military is the movement of Romani, Romeo Zetz, famed fighter pilot, though hers is much less cumbersome than Shane's. Still, her first appearance has her thinking about the more annoying parts of travel, not so much adventure, but a necessity to get from place A to place B. There had been too many shuttle flights, from station to station to station to get to this ship, for Romeo to know where she actually is in space. For her, the movement of actual travel has become confusing, but also not immediately important as long as she knows what her task at hand is. Her movement as a pilot is characterized, on the other hand, by speed, skill and danger, though it too is often in service of enabling even further travel. In one of her first scenes, she is in the airspace of a planet that had fallen to the conglomeration, too fast for evacuation of civilians to run smoothly, so that is her new task, to make sure that the civilians can get off the planet safely. Freighters and ferries, doubtlessly full of refugees, were boosting off planet in every direction, and the Federation infantry is also about to be evacuated, changing from the foot soldiers mentioned above, struggling through mud to refugees, at least for a time, until they can board their military vessels once more. Refugees thus feature in more than one focalizing character's narrative, but they are most prominent in Jimmy's parts, especially since Jimmy himself oscillates between refugee and fugitive. At first, he is portrayed as some kind of drifter. Another day, another station. This one was stripped right back to the bare necessities. Nothing there but a fuel stop, which was no use to Jimmy, and a filthy diner even he was not quite desperate enough to eat in. Jimmy is travelling from station to station, sometimes by hitching a lift, sometimes as a stowaway. He is desperate to get back to Earth, his original home, and to evade both Federation and conglomeration forces, as he escaped a position as a servant, or rather a slave, for Federation people, but is still going to be considered a Federation ally due to being human. He is on the run, but regards 
any risk is worth taking to get another step, another hyperspace jump closer to Earth, while staying ahead of those who want to recapture him, i.e. the Federation authorities. Jimmy is at first more fugitive than refugee, because his escape is considered unlawful by the Federation, and also because he is trying to get home rather than to flee from untenable situations at home. But as he shares many ways of transport with the refugees of the intergalactic war at the centre of Old Lie, it is through Jimmy's eyes that we encounter them, read about their experiences and learn of their plights. On one of the space stations Jimmy lands on in between rides through space, displaced people filled the hotels, overflowed the shabby emergency camp in the food hall, scattered through the filthy commerce area and into the concourse, creating more camps and shanty towns wherever they stopped. Jimmy tries to blend in with the refugees who have ended up on the derelict space station simply because it lacked the resources to send them elsewhere. As soon as Jimmy encounters the refugees, much of his narration is in fact focused on, his, on their situation. Jimmy had watched them stagger from their ships, overloaded hulks, bulk carriers, hollow trucks. The refugees were sentient whining cargo rather than passengers, dirty, lost and hungry, crying and helpless. Their treatment, both on the transport vessels and on the stations, is deplorable, with a so-called justification similar to the more or less tacit real-life reasons for anti-refugee sentiment. The refugees were not their species anyway, meaning the species of the people who are home to the stations in which the refugees seek shelter. They mugged, pickpocketed, profiteered, any small chance to turn the flood of invaders into any minute advantage. A way out of poverty, a meal. Here the refugees are even likened to invaders. Eventually, not only Jimmy, but everyone on the so-invaded space station joins the ranks of the refugees because the war is once more moving closer. So the boundaries between who is and isn't a refugee is quite fluid. It's quite unstable in this unstable situation of war. What then follows is a terrifying description of the refugees being herded into an escape ship and of the harrowing journey they have to endure afterwards. And it is probably worthwhile looking at some of those scenes in detail. There are detailed descriptions of the overcrowdedness on the transport ship. For example, fights break out over food, blankets and clothes, over a square metre of clear floor space in which to sit, because the ship is not built to carry so many people for a long time. The rush for space eventually turns even deadly, because the ship is so hopelessly overfull with displaced people. There would have been nowhere to sleep, even when it had not been overloaded. Once the refugees poured in, there was not even enough room left to stand. Those on chairs had thought they were lucky, until the crush of bodies became so great that fights over those chairs broke out. There was a crush, someone died, someone else was left broken, torn, crippled, unconscious, maybe dying. The dead citizen was removed, the killers, nobody could know who the killers were, stayed on the ship. Crammed into that ferry, everyone carrying everything they owned, the ship loaded to about three times its maximum capacity with bodies, they nearly didn't make it. The air had grown thick with breath, with sweat and fear, with the smell of people of multiple species who had gone too long unclean. The scrubbers, the air purifiers, pushed to the very limit. The ship went on emergency air, then that too ran out. They barely even make it to the next station, with many deaths during the journey. And once there, the refugees are processed bureaucratically, apparently the one universal aspect of life across the universe, sadly, and released onto the station where they are then kept, seemingly, forever. Notable about the scene is that the official handing out ID cards to refugees does not address them in either English or Federation, which they could understand, in what may either be a deliberate attempt to unsettle them or simply a refusal to care. Throughout the length of their stay at the station, or rather refugee camp, as it has now become, the uncertainty of how long they will be there is highlighted. 
Jimmy speaks of uncountable days and assumes that there will not be an end to it very soon, which is clearly reminiscent of refugees staying in limbo in refugee detention centres or camps around the world, and especially in, or rather, neighbouring Australia. When they are moved, it is to another space station, and thus only another temporary home rather than a permanent refuge on an actual planet where the refugees could start a new life. They do receive basic food, but it is planned for quantity, not quality, barely taking into account different dietary needs, which are, of course, an even bigger problem than they would be among human refugees, since this group consists of multiple alien species. Over the course of the narrative, the situation of Jimmy and Ita, a young human girl he picks up on the way, keeps deteriorating, despite brief moments of hope such as when they finally discover their true relation to one another, or when their identity as Shane Daniels' children is revealed. Ultimately, it also becomes clear that they were initially displaced not because of some emergency, like the refugees fleeing from war, but because they were forcibly taken away from their family and separated, to be brought up by people of other species within the Federation, reminiscent of the stolen generations that so affected and still affect Australia's past and present. Does this change the nature of their movement through the space among the stars? Perhaps. Besides the movements of soldiers or refugees, there's also another theme running through the entire novel that revolves around people returning home. Of course, this is also the case with Jimmy, who's desperate to return to Earth, but his narrative fuses more with those of the other refugees. So the theme of returning home is especially poignant in the case of Walker, an Aboriginal man who decides to return to his ancestral home despite its contamination from alien weapons testing. Most of the chapters focalising on Walker do indeed focus on his long march home, which ends both in his death but also in his return to country, an important concept within Aboriginal epistemologies. Shane and Romeo also spend a considerable part of the later narrative trying to get home to Earth, only to find that they have been permanently barred from returning to their own home. Interestingly, one of their last actions of protest against the Federation's mistreatment of humankind is to send out a message that first travels through a kind of biological network of students at Lunar City or Lunacy University, and the message will eventually travel all across the Federation net, so the Federation's version of the internet, supposedly, and thus across space. And it is therefore likely to reach many recipients who are separated by long distances across the universe. Here, the travels of information are seen as something positive, a way of perhaps finally achieving change and justice. The novel ultimately ends on a grim note, to be sure, but most of the characters remain engaged in their resistance, trying to continue their journeys. The only exceptions are Walker, who may be dead but has at least been able to reclaim his home, and William, who commits suicide, ultimately as a result of not being able to move forward, being stuck in the research facility within which he is imprisoned. Movement in the old lie is thus an ambiguous concept. It can be exhausting, dangerous, bloody and frightful, and it can end in death. But it also provides the hope of better futures and newfound communities, such as the found family formed by Jimmy, Itta and the alien scholar's speech, while movement of messages and information is even seen as crucial to maintain relationships and to engender social change. <laughs>